What's up, guys? My name is Robert Donaldson, and today we are back with episode number 10 of Rob's Best Bets for the date of December 7th, 2022. As always, you can find me on Twitter at RobDFB. And if you want more content like this in the future, please hit that like and subscribe button because it really does help out a ton. And before we get into the video, let's recap Tuesday's betting performance. And it was a very good day as we went 4-2 in the win-loss column. We'll bring in 5.30 units on the day. As we talked about on Monday, it's a long week and we won't be defined by one bad day when it's all said and done. All that being said, we've got an interesting card on Wednesday, so let's take a look at what we will be working with. For our first bet of the day, we are taking a look at an interconference matchup between UConn and Florida. And to get right to the point here, give me the Florida Gators getting the four and a half points. And listen, I know I'm a big fan of this UConn team as well, but this game is going to be their first real road matchup that isn't at a neutral site on the season. And this Florida team is coming into this game playing some really good basketball. And when you factor in that Kyle Lofton should be good to go for this one and that Colin Castleton is continuing to play at a high level for another year, this really does feel like Todd Golden's first real chance to make a splash as the Gators' new head coach. So give me the Florida Gators here. Get in the plus five points for two units and let's even throw an additional unit down on the money line here to make it even sweeter. For our second bet of the day, we are heading over to the Big Ten where we have a matchup between Michigan State and Penn State, and this really has the makings of a resurgence game for Sparty. And listen, yes, they are coming off two bad losses against Northwestern and on the road at Notre Dame, but in this matchup, Penn State hasn't won a game, let alone a home game against Michigan State by more than four and a half points since 2017. And when you look at Michigan State's schedule this season, going into that Northwestern game, they had played five games in 11 days, with four of them being away from East Lansing. That's a lot of energy being expended in a short period of time. That said, this team is more, much more rested at this point, and despite Malik Hall probably not playing in this one, I really do like the Spartans with the four and a half points. And I'll take them on the money line here as well. Same with Florida. So let's throw two units on the spread of plus four and a half and then an additional unit here on the money line. For pick number three, we are taking a look at a matchup between Manhattan and Providence. And if you aren't familiar with the wackiness of Manhattan season so far, you're about to be because two weeks before the season started, Manhattan's head coach, Steve Mazziello, was fired by the program just randomly, out of the blue, really no scandals broke or anything else like that. And as a result, multiple uh, players, including star point guard Jose Perez, decided to actually leave the program and transfer elsewhere. Surprisingly, so far, Manhattan has actually been a pretty resilient team, though, uh, so far this season. And they have been covering a lot of spreads, but it does seem like a lot of that tenacity um, it's starting to get to them because they are starting to get a little bit more fatigued. We've noticed that in the more recent games, especially this most recent one against Monmouth, where they actually lost by seven points, and it could have been something around 17 the way that game was going. And Monmouth is one of the worst teams in college basketball this season. So with all that being said, give me Providence laying the 18 points here with a reasonably confident bet of three units. For our fourth pick, we are taking a look at a matchup between Georgetown and Siena. And once again, we're seeing Georgetown laying six and a half points here against a good Siena team. And to keep this one short, that's just far too many points for a team like Georgetown. They are so bad. I, I don't even know how to describe how bad they are. So to keep this one very short and to the point, give me Siena getting the six and a half points here for four units in a game that I think that they could really win outright. And I do think this probably ends up being one of Patrick Ewing's final games as head coach of the Hoyas. Really don't know how they're even favored in this one. Should be more like a pickup line, pick them line rather, but I don't want to take Sienna on the money line here just because it does seem a little bit fishy. That said, I am completely fine with taking the six and a half points and laying a pretty confident bet on them. For our fifth play of the day, we are heading over to the Pac-12 Conference where we have an interconference matchup between Wazoo and Northern Kentucky. And what we know about Wazoo this year is that 
they struggle at a few things pretty mightily. And those things are scoring, making free throws, and staying out of foul trouble. They really do shoot themselves in the foot quite a bit. And when you're in a matchup with a team who relies heavily on defense like Northern Kentucky, and they're going to be playing press on you, man, those traits make for an awful recipe for covering 13 points. So for our fifth play of the day here, give me Northern Kentucky getting the 13 points for four units. Really think that Northern Kentucky does have a shot at making this a very tight ball game, potentially even winning it outright. We're going to stay away from the money line. Same with uh, Siena, but I really do love getting that many points against a team like Wazoo. For our sixth pick of the day, we are taking a look at a matchup between the Clemson Tigers and the Towson Tigers. And Clemson is coming off back to back wins over Penn State and Wake Forest. Very impressive wins. However, in this matchup, this line is only sitting at eight points. Smells a little bit fishy, right? Well, <laughs> it is, and that's because Towson is a team that has relished these types of matchups of playing up to an opponent over the years, and they are also a team like Northern Kentucky that relies heavily on defense and controlling that pace of the game, and they do a really great job of that. And with Clemson, they really don't present any real matchup nightmares for Towson here, athletically or size-wise. And I think eight points is the perfect amount to take Towson here with the confidence. So give me Towson getting the eight points for four units for our sixth pick of the day. All right, last but not least for our final pick of the day, we are heading back to the SEC where we have an interconference matchup between Pittsburgh and Vanderbilt. And let's wrap this video up promptly here and just give me the Commodores laying the three and a half points. No matter how you slice it, Pittsburgh has definitely been an impressive team so far this season. However, their scoring efficiency has blossomed to unreasonable levels over the past two games against NC State and Northwestern. And with a team like Vanderbilt that has a lot to offer defensively, I really do like the Commodores to pull out an impressive win here at home. So for our final play of the day, Give me Vanderbilt laying the three and a half points for a very confident five units. All that being said, I want to thank you all for checking out today's video. But before you go, if any of you guys would like an additional free play, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over to Twitter and drop a follow at RobDFB and then simply message me asking for that extra free play. My direct messages are open, so once you hit that follow button, just hit that message icon and ask for that free play and I will deliver. That said, I really do appreciate you guys checking out today's video. And with that said, I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.